Welcome to Linda's TV show, the home of news. If it is your first time of stopping by or coming across my YouTube channel, you are highly welcome. Please, I beg you for a favor, smash on that red button that says subscribe. Beside that red button is a notification bell. The essence of that bell is for you to be updated or informed each time or day I upload a new video. My returning subscribers, those who keep on watching my videos each time I upload, I appreciate your presence. I appreciate your comments in all my videos, both negative and positive ones. Thank you. As for a wealth that we saw happen during this pandemic where individuals like Jeff Bezos, I saw an article that said um, that you know, Amazon and Jeff Bezos made so much money during the pandemic that he could give every single employee a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars and have as much money as he had pre pandemic. Yeah. So it, it's, it's fascinating. Um, you know, cause it, then it, it kind of brought this conversation like, you know, and, and, and one of the things that I, I loved about it, um, and, and hope that like, did you, cause you saw, uh, obviously, you know, like you said, here's Jeff Bezos who, targets you yeah um uh um for for a, a lot of these reasons um including you know um your 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 big enough uh, uh, chris smalls and then all of these white supremacists racists Absolutely. kind of come out of the woodwork but then you also had um particularly black women on twitter like really rally behind Absolutely. you and Absolutely. then they start to take on because i seen yeah. somebody say like uh, Jeff, when you we already got the party planned for when it was your time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we going we going to celebrate for a week. So I kind of saw. So did you also see that? And like, so at that point, they had cut me off of Twitter. Oh, really? Yeah, my suspension. Oh, um, so you were suspended for that tweet? Yeah, not wow. the tweet against um, Bezos, the one right. uh, about talking it. about the Queen. Right. Yeah. So, first of all. I do not have any intention to rob or support Robin Jeff Bezos. Uh, me neither. As a song, you know this, of Absolutely, course, yes. <laughs> artistic expression <laughs> artistic that expression. I'm listening. That to. was just Siri X. If y'all are and respect the jokes. X. Hashtag respect <laughs> the jokes. <laughs> and I also, I don't deny Jeff Bezos money. Right. right? He owns a business. 100%. He should earn from his business. Absolutely. Right. Also, the people that work for Jeff Bezos, I don't want them to lose their jobs either. 100%. He's supporting the livelihood, you know, of a million employees or yes. et cetera. Right? right. We'd like them to what? have breaks. Exactly. And be able, and be to, able to pee. Right. And be able yes. to have a livable wage. Exactly. But like you said, we're not trying to take no, down Amazon. Not at all. Right. If I, you know, if we're trying oh, to take Maripo? down Amazon. <laughs> well, <laughs> said that. well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know, I am not here right. to, you know, take the, the food out of the mouths of people who work for Jeff Bezos. Absolutely. I am like Chris Smalls and other people just asking that they be treated better. Yes. And their mm. rights as workers be respected. Yes. So, you know, that. And, okay, uh, the timeline continues. So after that. Um, so you get suspended, like, do you, does Twitter send like an email, like saying like you've been suspended or your account's been suspended or you just go to log on and you can't? I just can't. Okay, got you. Um, and what it says to me is that uh, this tweet has been flagged for uh, being uh, inciting violence and being abusive and uh, targeting, uh, targeted harassment. That's what the notification said to me. Mm -hmm. And then it said that, uh, do you want to delete it or do you want to appeal? And I said, appeal. And I wrote down, you know, my reasons for not wanting to delete it because I did not agree that I was inciting violence, nor was I engaging in targeted harassment. Right, right. Um, but then while they're processing your appeal, you're locked out of the system. So you can't get on. Mm. So it, you know, so, the aftermath when um, black women started to ride for me and uh, start to get attacked themselves. And so I didn't see that because that early I was already out. Right. And I was out for almost a week after. So everything I saw happening on Twitter was secondhand through my partner, Dr. Siri Alang. 
And she was the one kind of reporting to me what was going on. And, you know, and of course, at this time, I had already had calls from, you know, my um, administrators and, and things like that, uh, saying that uh, there there would be a response. They didn't tell me what the response would be, but definitely this has come to the point that they've seen it and they're going to have to respond to it. And I right. said, and I also, you know, at that point explained to them, my perspective and where I came from and uh, what the, the British monarch had done uh, and what she represented and what I was, uh, the, the truth I was telling and how I was speaking from not just my pain, but the collective pain of my family Absolutely. and my broader Igbo people. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I told that to them and then they said, okay, and... And that was it. Uh, whatever else I heard from them was when I was hearing it on the news along with everybody else or Absolutely. when I saw the statement being uh, released, et cetera. Absolutely. And um, there, so uh, I had two more questions and I want to open it up. Um, has this experience changed the way, because like you said, you kind of go in, you use Twitter, um, you, you kind of almost like prepare <laughs> you know, yeah. like you said, to teach when you go in there, has this experience um, changed the way you're looking at engaging in social media or do you intend to continue to engage in the way you have? So even in this, my most intense moment on social media, fundamentally, more than I am anything else in this world, more than I am a mother, more than I am uh, a researcher more than I am uh, a sister, a community member. I am a teacher. And if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to teach. Right. And even in that very intense moment of profound pain and my outburst, my emotional outburst of deep, deep pain, I was teaching. I followed up explaining that there was a genocide against the Biafra people. Right. The, the, who were trying, you know, the Igbo people who were trying to form an independent nation of Biafra. They wanted to be separate from the country that the British Empire had imposed on us, which was this country of Nigeria, where they kind of just kind of took a bunch of independent nations who don't have anything to do with each other, don't even speak each other's language, don't relate. Many of them were even enemies and warring at the time. Smushed them all together and drew these arbitrary lines around them mm-hmm. and called them countries and named those countries. Right. And then said, now y'all get along and do a country for us and be a, a union for us. And then go through you know, contentious, bloody independence processes that never really yield any real independence. You're still part of a commonwealth afterwards. True. And you have the eternal meddling in your affairs and the eternal extraction of your resources and the eternal fomenting of divisiveness and infighting mm-hmm. in order to be able to control you. This is what an oppressor does, a colonizer does. Uh, this is, these are you know, tactics and strategies of dominance. Right. We were subjected to that as a larger unit of Nigeria. And then when the Igbo people said, we want our own thing, let's, let's go in and do that. Well, it so happened to be that the territory that this new country of Biafra was going to be in included very, very rich oil reserves. Mm. And the British were not going to let go of that. Wow. And the people that they had put in power, you know, the, their puppet Nigerian governments weren't going to do that either because they needed it for the Nigerian project. Right. And Britain needed it for its own interests and uses. So Great Britain got directly involved in this civil war and in the war for independence and decided that they would do everything to make sure that Biafra did not go. Wow. Mm. And this everything meant directly funding genocide of the people of Biafra. This is what happened. This is the historical record. I'm not saying anything that's in doubt or in uh, question, right? Yeah. 
even when it was happening during this period of 1967 to 1970, the BBC themselves were <laughs> producing documentaries, decrying it, covering all the protests that were happening wow. in Great Britain. Oh, this is recent. Yeah, this is very recent. My sister, for example, is turning 60 this month. And my sister was alive at that time. She was like five, six. Right. My other brother was alive at the time, and my second brother was in my mother's belly. She was pregnant during this time. Mm. Running from village to village to escape the bombs that wow. they were throwing at villagers. So when we tell you that three million people, some people have set up to five million, six million, or some people quote low, so the sort of average agreed upon number that you really cannot contest is about three million. When you think of a Holocaust, right. this is a Holocaust. Absolutely. Now, the Holocaust that we're, we typically were most familiar with is the most famous one against the Jewish people. Yes. Where they, you know, six million of them were massacred. Absolutely. So at the most sort of conservative estimation, they did half of us, right. half that number. Civilians, these are non-combatants, and more than a million children alone starved. Wow. Mm. The British paid for that. And Queen Elizabeth II was ruler. She was monarch at that time. This was the government that she was supervising. Now, I don't buy this notion that she was just a statue, if you will. I was going to ask you that question. Or a, a decorative plant. Right. Or, you know, some kind of, I don't know, tchotchke sitting on the shelf. Right. This was a ruler. This was someone, the very crown that she had on her head signifying the fact that she's a monarch was made from plunder, right. diamonds, blood diamonds. Absolutely. Mm. So the throne that she's sitting on is a throne of blood. So you cannot say that she was just this little old lady or this figurehead that really had nothing to do with anything and it was just the British government that were making their deals and you know governing however they would without relating it directly to her because she directly benefited her very position as a monarch. The palace that she lived in, the opulence, the obscene levels of wealth that she enjoyed Absolutely. were all paid for by our blood. Mm. Mm. And I don't say this figuratively. Right. And I don't say this as something that, oh, this long remote past, let's say, of human enslavement which on my mother's side, she's from Trinidad, my ancestors over there were enslaved by the British. Mm. I'm talking about recent living memory of people still alive today. Her money, her government, funded our slaughter. Mm. And people expected me to, to be calm or to be... <laughs> I, I don't know what they expected. Right, right, right. When the person who literally paid money for bombs and guns and military Absolutely. supplies to come and massacre your people is dying, right. you're not supposed to dance? What's the reaction to that? Mm. You know, I remember when um, we found out that Osama bin Laden was killed and Americans celebrated, mm -hmm. right, because... They held him responsible for 9-11, which just passed, and that terror that occurred in those 3,000 or so people that, that, that died. Yeah. And it's like, but when it's our terror, when it's our pain, when it's our Absolutely. loss as black and brown people, and we, particularly when we express it in a way that challenges you know, white supremacy, um, the white supremacy dominant narrative and this, you know, kind of almost like Disneying uh, idea that people had of a queen, um, then all of a sudden it's like we, yeah. we're always told to be civil, to be calm, to be peaceful as black and brown people. And so, but when it's somebody that you feel harmed America, you can dance, you can celebrate, you can take Absolutely. out your flags, yeah. and that's, uh, that's held up. You can have, a, I mean, you know, lynchings were celebratory things in the history of the United States of America where they would put, have a parade and party and... And take children. Right. Take, An entire family would go and enjoy the spectacle 100%. of murdering black people. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So, um, 
My last question is, you know, um, a support petition has been produced. Yeah. Um, four or 5,000 people have signed this petition. So when you see that support, yeah. um, just how does that, how do you feel in that moment? <sighs> it, it felt so good, right? Especially since I, I was locked out of Twitter, right. you know, battling this suspension um, and having my account, you know, temporarily uh, suspended. Um, and just seeing the outpouring of support from people who may or may not have agreed with how I expressed my pain, but certainly believed that I had a right to do it. Absolutely. In however I did it. And that was so important to me. And it was wonderful to see that because not only that letter with, you know, you know, four thousand, five thousand signatures yeah. um of was like fellow academics. Of academics, journalists, students. Exactly. People around people in this country, in the United States, and around the world. And it wasn't just academics, it was professionals, it was right. community members, students, you know, all sorts of people were there saying we got your back. Absolutely. Now, once again, they were not endorsing what I did or the words that I use, but they were endorsing my right to speak my truth and to speak my pain and not be terrorized and abused and violently targeted for it hmm. when Jeff Bezos put that target on my back. Absolutely. And then... In addition to that letter, there was also a letter from my colleagues at my university, other faculty, staff, other employees, with more than 100 names on that letter as well, and then a, another letter from students wow. at Carnegie Mellon who filled, last time I looked, like eight pages mm. of signatures, and not even on a list form, in like block text, wow. one wow. after the other, Thick. Beautiful. And even on campus, they spray painted on sort of the main quad. There are these, uh, there's this wall, this white wall, where they spray painted RIP colonialism on one side, and on the other side, let her speak. Mm. These were Carnegie Mellon students who did that. So when I saw all of that, the, the, the outpouring of support from the broader academic community and, in general, people outside of my institution, along with my colleagues at my institution and the students that I serve at this institution. I cannot, and I'm, you know, a words person. Words are my business. I'm a linguist. I cannot even find the words to tell you just how thankful and grateful and joyful mm. I felt Beautiful. in such days of pain, mm. right? Because I'm a human being. I act tough, right? But you can only take so much abuse. True. So in all of that pain, to get this kind of support, I realize I have people. Absolutely. people absolutely wonderful wonderful and that includes us at one hood <sighs> yes sir. well you got us too um beautiful beautiful that was deep that was intense mm -hmm. but i mean this this speaks to the volume about like how these ripples effects are felt across the globe when, it, when you talk about the monarchy like not everybody is going to react favorably to the crown and this is a lesson to people it should be a lesson to people absolutely. globally that the people of the global majority have the one have been the ones that have been forced into subjugation, been Absolutely. the one forced into oppression, been right. the ones who have felt the tyranny of the crown firsthand, and, right? And, and told like to just like suck it up and just right. deal with yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. because of Be all, happy because you we got, got the East India uh, we got the East India Trading Company, right? We because we have a uh, a gold standard because right. we have English as this lingua franca spoken around the world we because we have all these things that fall under the umbrella of the crown that quote unquote benefit the world we're supposed to be quiet and just accept it right. because they civilize the savage right 
right? Mm-hmm. And these these are things that we're supposed to yeah. be placated with. And I, I have to also say that my, my quarrel is not with the British people. Right. The British people are subject to her rule uh-huh. as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know, and, my, and, <laughs> there is no quarrel with the British people. They are subjects. They, you know, they, 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 didn't, they don't elect her. This, this is something that's extrapolated, right? And I have a lot to say about this. Like, I have so much to say about this. In the West, patriotism equals prejudice, right? You look at what people talk about patriotism is in the States. You wave around a flag. That's a symbol of violence for a lot of people. 100%. In England, it's no different. In Canada, it's no different. Like, you wave around the Union Jack. You wave around the Maple Leaf. Indigenous people suffered at the hands of, of erecting that flag on soil. Absolutely. Right? The Irish... Who are white people? Yeah, weren't considered human by the crown, right? And the and these and these are things. This, this this is what I'm saying. Like I have yet to see, and I, maybe it is. I don't know. You maybe you can tell me. I have yet to see the conversation where people are backlashing and, and slandering the the Irish people for speaking out against the Queen. Has anybody? Has it come up I, online I mean, at all? Not. I mean, I think I haven't seen it. I mean, I I saw like you know, but I'm again, I'm not. When I Twitter, I'm on Black Twitter, so I right. saw and, and that's another the thing. response of Black Twitter. And I, you know, just speaking to what you said, I learned a lot. I didn't know like the word loot is an Indian word. Mm. Pajama, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Urban, right. veranda, yeah, yeah. But, but but that like it was like attributed to the fact that they took so many diamonds ah. from India. They looted, right? Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and so I, I think I. You know, of course, I laughed, you know, when you had mentioned um, what you said about um, uh, Prince Harry. Um, it reminded <laughs> me of the tweet um, uh, that somebody had said about the uh, queen, like, never having to pay rent. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. like, you know, basically was just like, you're just, you're just, you're just living off vibes, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then they dragged me for calling him jobless. Yeah, right. They said... <laughs> This was the tweet. Can't stop thinking about how that lady lived nearly a hundred years, never had a job, never paid rent, just lived off public dollars, stolen wealth, and vibes. <laughs> We've never seen anything like her. She just might be the greatest grifting parasite the oh, world shit. has ever seen. And it's like when you, but again, it's like part of what makes social media dope is that people who like. Uh, you know, if there was no social media, all we would see was mainstream media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This kind of celebration of mourning, we wouldn't hear the other side. And somebody like me who knew a little bit, but I didn't know about Biafra. Like, I didn't know about these things. So I do, I, again, I have 50 more million questions, but I do <laughs> want to pass it to Trouble and Miracle um, as well to kind of to kind of hop into the conversation. So I don't have a question. I have more of a statement. And my statement is about how your specific case, especially with Jeff Bezos j- jumping into the conversation, but not criticizing the Irish celebration of the death of the queen. Right. She goes to show it's it like it's like another piece of evidence for the fact that black women are the most disenfranchised people in this country. Right. He felt it easier to come at you than it would be to come at the Irish people literally dancing yeah. on social media right. to the occasion. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's a, my partner, while all this was happening, she would read tweets to me sometimes or let mm-hmm. me know what was going on. Like, I didn't have access to my, you know, to it myself. Yeah. But she would kind of narrate things or send me screenshots, et cetera. And um, another way in which I knew I had people were Nigerians. Mm. And African Americans and other Africans and you know all types of people were waging Twitter wars <laughs> as well. Absolutely behind this 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 case. Yes. So that in addition to those letters of support, I also saw like real material supports. Even my trolls, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Because I'm always getting into it with, you know, uh, arguing about misogyny, for example, right. with mm-hmm. Nigerian men um, and sometimes African-American men. You may remember me from the tweet. Um, <clears throat> the misogyny, you know, struggle right. has mm-hmm. made me like some firm enemies and trolls. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, and even those joined up to go around 
to be there as soldiers, if you will, mm. underneath whoever was coming to say. And to how did they do it? Not by, you know, abusing, but by facts. They would post links. They would post videos and saying, this is the information you are lacking to understand where she's coming from. Mm. And we agree with her because we share this story as well. Mm. Alaibo. Alaibo is the... The name of, like, it's the Igbo name for, like, our land. Uh, you know, Allah meaning, like, our mother's breast, kind of. This is mm. our, our turf. And uh, Igbo land, like, came hard because this was our story. Mm-hmm. And this was our collective pain. Mm. And I was talking about it. Beautiful. And, but that was, you know, African Americans as well. Like, mm-hmm. black Twitter for me is not just African Americans. Black Twitter for me is also, you know, just right. black people in, black general, people in general on Twitter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the African American subsection of black Twitter was also like riding hard, taking huge hits as well, especially the outspoken black women, the, the feminists who Absolutely. came. Right. So I was hearing this, like I wasn't seeing it, but hearing it kind of vicariously and also feeling that there was a lot of support in the letters, but a lot of support sort of in, you know, on ground as well, mm. where these battles were happening on Twitter, on Facebook and elsewhere. I, I do find it fascinating that you engage, um, cause I don't like to, pe- I don't think people, People probably just engage you not knowing that you're a professor of, like, applied linguistics. Um, and, but what I wanted to say is, you know, here in Pittsburgh, this was deemed one of the worst cities for black women um, to live. And for me, the legacy of the crown is that statistic is that anti-black, they globalized anti-blackness. So when people talk about, like, why pick these black women, it's because the crown helped through media um, in their campaigns to say, like, black people did not matter, whether it was here in America or, or in, in the African continent or in the wider diaspora, mm-hmm. is that, like, black pain, black people do not matter. Absolutely. And so if you want to build up your brand, you dog out black people. That's it. I mean, look at how their media treat Megan, right? Mm-hmm. Megan Markle. Absolutely. And the viciousness they reserve for her. You know, and she's she talks about how the fact that her, you know, her heritage and her appearance as a light skinned biracial, you know, person um, had before shielded her from a lot of this. But she didn't really hit that racism, that racism. Till she encountered the British mm. press. Absolutely. And my goodness, they gave it to her. They made her that target, you know, because they, and it, it didn't even fit sort of, you know, you know, they were guessing about how dark her child would be and all kinds of things. They were painting her exactly as you described, that this disposable creature, but not just disposable, worthless, and on top of it, vile as well, blamed everything on her. This is, she was a stand-in. For their misogynoir, their overall hatred of black women in general. And um, I may be wrong, but I feel I know Stormy to talked about you know how racist Britain was, and the, and. And I'm right in the soccer. That's the one they were throwing the um, yeah. bananas. bananas. You know, yeah. so UK has this you know legacy of the hooligan and, culture of you know, football, yeah. Yeah, of the anti-blackness. Mm. But you talked about your partner, and I just wanted like how much you big up black love and like show <laughs> black love. And the cool thing about your Twitter is in you know, the meetups, the, the matchmaking. Yes. And so it's not like all like negative. And so I, I always say like sometimes fighting white supremacy. Yeah. We have to build these communities and you've mm-hmm. been able to build a lot of community, you know, on social media. Can you talk a little bit about that? Definitely. Um, I'm a very strategic tweeter. Mm-hmm. Now, of course that tweet, <laughs> the queen, and that was an emotional outburst. That was not planned. That was not strategic. Um, typically, I'm very purposeful about, you know, certain content, certain rotations, thinking about certain audiences, uh, also thinking about the times when I'm tweeting. Like, I know prime time for Nigerians. I know prime time for the U.S. and, and things like that. Um, so one thing that I purposefully, and you recognize it because that's exactly what I'm doing, is I literally focus on elevating and highlighting Black love, black love for self, for us, because, you know, we all we got. 
black love in general for one another. Black beauty, black brilliance. Just like Issa Rae said, I'm rooting for everybody black. I'm rooting for everything black. Mm -hmm. And Pan-African at that, because my black or my concept of black is not just limited to one type of black, right? Mm -hmm. And I strategically do that. I strategically try to highlight a Pan-African inclusive blackness. I strategically try to highlight and praise and shower all kinds of love on black women. You may be familiar with how I always say fine aunties. I, I'm a connoisseur of fine aunties. I love fine aunties, right? And who is a fine auntie? Fine auntie is a woman generally, right? A black woman specifically, but I think any woman can be a fine auntie. But the ones that I usually have in mind are black women, over 35. Because that's, there's also the whole idea that once you reach a certain age as a woman, that you, you lose your appeal, your beauty, you somehow don't fuck anymore, and you're just not about anything you know, beautiful or sexual or sexy or hot or anything like that. So I very strategically big up fine aunties. I big up big women, right? fleshy, curvaceous, luscious women, right? just to... Well, number one, you know, talk about shit I like. <laughs> and number two, show that we are worthwhile. We are, we're wonderful. Why wouldn't you envy and, and love us? Look how gorgeous we are. Right? So, yeah, it's very, very intentional. And my matchmaking is um, people get mad because I've done these threads for everybody except straight men. <laughs> <laughs> But it's coming. <laughs> they have their own. They have their own. They have their own tweets. They're good. They're good. And we're going to, um, so, you know, have one of your articles be our white page. But I did have one more question before we close out. Um, because I saw in the wake of, you know, uh, Queen Elizabeth passing and this conversation around colonialism. Yeah. Um, a call for reparations, right? I think Jamaicans yeah. mm -hmm. were saying, like, you know, instead of having more, like, we need reparations. Absolutely. Um, you you spoke, you know, you taught us about this very recent history yeah. uh, around Biafra. Is there a movement or calls for some type of reparation? Because, you know, we've seen reparations happen mm -hmm. uh, with, with the, uh, the Holocaust of Jewish people, Absolutely. deservedly so. You know, I, I, you know, you mentioned, you know, I'm part of the National African Americans Reparation Commission that was started by uh, Dr. Ron Daniels. Absolutely. First of all, the queen never once apologized. She never once opened her mouth to say sorry. Everybody, the history records know what happened and what was done in her name right. and for her crown. Not just to the people of Biafra, but you talked about the Kenyans, you know, the Indians, the indigenous people, right? The, you know, Native Americans. So it's just never once have they taken responsibility and just said sorry. So what I am advocating for and what a lot of evil people are advocating for, number one is to just recognize what you did mm. and say sorry. And then we can move on to conversations about what does reparations look like? It could look like leaving the oil alone. Right. It could look like, you know, actual payments and repayments, you know, of the compensating the three million lives that were lost. Right. I don't know. We haven't even gotten that far yet because we can't even get them to admit the shit they did. Wow. Man. And how does that feel as a language professor? Didn't <laughs> know. It's so like you know. It could all be so simple. Yeah. And it's just that refusal. Mm. They continue to dehumanize us. That's what it feels like. Mm. We are not even human enough to them to sit down with them. Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. 
Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.